We are back with a full crew on Speed Street. Um, Connor Daly back from Las Vegas. I have still kind of fraternity leave going on, but I am here again. And of course, Ben is running things. He was with us last week. Appreciate it. It is Speed Street. Um, thanks for being with us. The IndyCar season has wrapped. The NASCAR season is still going on. Uh, like I said, Connor's back from Sin City. I call it the city that never sleeps. So we'll have to get more opinion on him from that. Maybe he didn't sleep. He probably didn't out there. But full crew back this week. Glad to be with you. We have a very, very exciting guest, um, a legend in the racing game. AJ Allmendinger stops by on this week's episode, talks about a ton of great stuff, both IndyCar, NASCAR, his name, pickup lines for women everything you could want. Um, so we're glad you're here with us. And of course, we're glad to have our man Connor Daly back. What's up, bro? How are we feeling after Vegas? Uh, feeling good. Um, you know, right out the gate. I uh, want to apologize to our folks, you know, for missing the episode. Um, and also, I think we, uh, you know, there, there's another IndyCar podcast out there, uh, you know, hosted by friends of ours, Alex Rossi and, and, and James Hinchcliffe uh, off track. And, and I do believe that they um, inadvertently were throwing shade at me for not being on our episode last week because they apparently recorded an episode from Las Vegas. But to be fair, I think they did that when they got in and they got in about 10 hours earlier than I did. So it is uh, I, I don't like the inadvertent shade being thrown at our podcast uh, because we support them. But uh, I get it. And um, I, I, I we're back and we're back to talk about it. Vegas was a great time. Uh, Vegas was not built on winners. Um, I will say that right now, uh, probably spent too much money there, but, uh, had a great time with some Did you friends. break Mark even at least? Did we get Oh no, winners? no, 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 no. Did not break even at all. Uh, Marco Andretti was there. Uh, James Hinchcliffe there, Alex Rossi there, obviously, uh, great individuals. Um, and yeah, that it was, it was a, a wonderful time for a, a friend's bachelor party. And you know what? Vegas midweek is an interesting strategy. Tuesday to Friday, getting mm. home Friday night, and then you're in the weekend. So you're not like thrust back into business. You can kind of sleep your way back to a schedule, which is actually, you know, not a bad way to treat the body. That's the way to do it right there, man. I like that a lot. Midweek trips. Yeah, you can't come back <laughs> from a trip on a Sunday. Doesn't matter if it's Disney oh. World or Vegas or whatever. You you, you got to give yourself a little bit of leeway there, man, for sure. I love that. Exactly. I do want to give I do want to give a shout out to uh, to you. You hooked me up, hooked me and my buddies up uh, to be able to play at the Brickyard. Got out there, played some gaff, nice. uh, Brickyard Crossing. Shot a 51 on the front nine and about a 72 on the back nine. So Back nine will get you. Back yeah. nine will get you every you time. You try to say back nine, best nine, but it was not that for me. But what an absolutely majestic, beautiful course, man. It was freaking awesome. So that, I love it out there. I'm, I'm definitely glad you got to play. It's I, I love I, I need to play there more. I it's now that we're off season time, you know, it's still warm outside. Got to get out there and start swinging the clubs more and try to be a more efficient golfer so we can go up against Scott McLaughlin. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, great. To, uh, great to see you out there swinging the sticks. You're a dad now, so you got to be a big golf guy. Yeah, definitely. And my, my pals wanted to say thanks to you. And they're like, we owe him some beers and a round on us. And I was like, all right. Yeah, so we'll work. We'll work to make that happen. Get out there. Um, but now we got, like I said, AJ Allmendinger joins us. Fantastic conversation coming up. Um, but the 2022 IndyCar season is over. And because of the bachelor party you were on last week, we haven't gotten to hear Connor Daly's thoughts following the entirety of the season. So what do you think, man? I mean, what, what were the highs? What were the lows? Um, what are you looking forward to in 2023? Let's just hear kind of the rundown from, from CD. Well, I mean, honestly, first half, awesome. Uh, second half, awful. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, just, it's one of those things that really not sure what was going on the last few races, just the amount of things that, you know, were kind of going wrong for us. Uh, a lot of it out of our control. You know, even at Laguna, you know, we had some, had some serious issues during the race. Um, you know, that we don't know yet. We obviously haven't, haven't found anything yet. And, and for me, it was, a, it was a struggle, but, um, but uh, you know, the guys have been on vacation, obviously the week after the season, you know, the boys and everyone at the team needs a rest. It's been a long year. Um, but again, you know, we zero crashes all year long, you know, the car kept the car clean all season long, which is really important, uh, really good on the guys. Um, and you know what, we, we had an incredible Indy 500. I think there's a lot of really good things to look back on that people easily forget about. Um, you know, qualifying in the fast six, uh, at the Indy GP, you know, finishing fifth, 
uh, you know, qualifying third and third for Iowa, you know, that's huge for us. Um, you know, having a shot at winning the Indy 500. I mean, that's, that's the, obviously the highlight, um, you know, finishing sixth there, finishing sixth there and feeling like we got robbed of a top three, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a very, you know, very cool thing to look back on. Um, but obviously, you know, we want to make big improvements for next year. So, you know, thankfully we, this is the first time in my life where I've gone into an off season, um, you know, with, 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 with uh, job security. Um, and, and I think, you know, we, as a group, you know, for both Renus and I, I think there, we know what we can do to improve and, and it's a big team effort to try to, you know, to, to try to get us, you know, get us higher up the grid and, and, and higher up the finishing order at several different tracks, uh, for next year. But, uh, realistically, I just, yeah, the last few races, I mean, I have no idea how, what can happen, happen. You know what I mean? It's just unbelievable luck in these races, just things, things happening to us, things, you know, things that, 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 you know, you just can't really predict. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but again, having the confidence to come back for next year is, is definitely lightens the load on the shoulders, um, you know, heading into the off season and, and, um, you know, it's, it is what it is, but overall IndyCar championship, I mean, will power champion. I think he completely deserves it. Um, Joseph Newgarden, I think probably drove one of the most impressive races of his life uh, in Laguna Seca. I mean, that is absurd the way that that like, team can do that. He was like I playing mean, Mario Kart out there, bro. I mean, he was just picking yeah. apart the field. It's, it's astounding the pace that the Penske cars had at the, at the end of the season and the second half of the season. I mean, just, those cars are absurdly fast and, uh, and, and they, you know, the drivers obviously did what they had to do as well. So, you know, Joseph did everything he could, um, you know, the qualifying mistake for him was a big one. That was, that was a big, big mistake for Joseph. And again, I, I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> I saw his car like it was, I was like, Oh my gosh, that is a wild scene. Um, but, uh, but yeah, drove the race of his life. Uh, and Will Power drove the race that he needed to. And honestly, Alex Pelo destroyed everyone. Like yeah. literally, it, it was it was a it was a a demeaning of the rest of the field. Like he literally just like kicked everyone in the face, directly in the mouth. Um, and so again, he probably felt real good doing that. And obviously, then afterwards, you know. He's like, all right, we're back in the 10 car again next year. So well, that, that's what I was going to say. Do you think like he had to have already known that the 10 car deal was going to be fine? He was back in the 10. So it, it, feel, it felt like he was kind of driving just carefree. Hey, I'm going to go out there, put on a show because I know I don't have that cloud hanging over my head anymore. I'm good in the 10. Let's go out there and let it rip. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. I mean, maybe that was the case for sure. I think there's, um, you know, a, a lot is finalized before the public obviously knows. So, you know, I have no doubt that he, he knew ahead of time or his group, um, you know, got, got that deal done ahead of time, but um, yeah, just a, an impressive performance, you know, Ganassi uh, delivers a great, you know, great vehicle for him. He did the job, he did everything he needed to do. And, and, uh, and, but it was still Will Powers day, you know what I mean? Unbelievable season for him. I mean, the most polls of anyone ever, um, but you know, what's crazy. He had to out qualify Callum Eilat to do it. You know what I mean? Which is, really? which is awesome for Callum, a uh, friend of the show, obviously. Um, Callum did a great job in qualifying, unbelievable job to qualify on the front row at Laguna Seca. Um, fantastic. Very happy for that team. They've done an incredible job for him. They've done an incredible job in general. Um, and, and yeah, just a lot of interesting things happening at Laguna, you know, crazy tire wear, I think we really need to see a little bit, a little bit more consistency when it comes to, um, you know, some tire performance and tire stuff like that from Firestone. But obviously, we know that Firestone's a great partner. We never wanna, we never wanna throw shade at them. We're just talking about real things, uh, and I love Firestone. But uh, but yeah, it seems to be some of the drivers definitely are, are, you know, have a few questions on like, man, pretty wild how the how the tires were at Laguna Seca. So. Um, it creates an interesting race, creates an interesting strategy, you know, four stops, five pit stops. I did six because we had a lot of issues. Um, but, uh, but yeah, interesting way to finish the year, but I think a very, very competitive season. And I think Scott McLaughlin right out the gate is going to be a favorite for the championship next year. That's my, yeah. that's my first hot take for next for 2024. 
or three, yeah. whatever it is yeah. next year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you look <laughs> The finish that Scotty Mack had um, to the 2022 season, and then I think the the finish that we saw from Alex Lowe, and then now that he's locked down in that ten ride, I mean, I, me personally going into 2023, I think it's I think it's you know Palo, Newgarden, Scotty Mack, uh, top top three. You know when you look at the 2023 season, um, but then you look at two Connor. You mentioned Callum Eilat. I mean, what 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 great hands we have in this series where you look at David Malukas and Christian Lungard Smith Steen Steinville and yeah. and and Callum Eilat uh and even Renus is still very very young Ray I mean we have all these young guys who who are coming in and who are being successful right away going up against the old head not old heads but the the vets right the guys who've been around yeah. the guys who have proven um so I think that's very very exciting heading into 2023 as well yeah exactly and and everything about what we have going in IndyCar, right? Like we, we talk about the momentum so much. We talk about how it would have been really nice to have a television show this year because of all the drama. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that I think we can build on for next year. It's something that I think is very, very exciting for the future, but we just, you know, again, when it comes to people knowing about what we, the show that we are putting on, that has to be the maximum effort, right? Over the off season, you know, we have obviously a really long off season, which is tough. You know, we drop out of the limelight. We drop out of a lot of the, you know, the, the attention spans of motorsport fans. Right. But I think we have to do a, a, a and again, we will try on speed street to keep people tuned in to everything that's happening in IndyCar, Absolutely. but it's, it's something that, you know, we need to come out next year swinging because, again, trying to go up against NFL Sunday on, uh, you know, Laguna Seca weekend, ratings were awful, like abs awful. Um, you know, the, the drag racing got, you know, better ratings than, than we did. And, and, uh, and, and, it, and it's tough to see that because, again, it's our championship finale. Like, it's, it's, it's – I get that there is football on, obviously, and I love football. I love it with my heart and it's my soul and my mind. Not my wallet, but my mind. Um, but it's, it's something that, you know, again, we see NASCAR can still pull over a million people. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's something that we just have to make people more aware that we are putting on a great show. So – uh, that yeah. that I think is the is the main goal for the off season. What 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 was your what I mean? What did you think of the season? Obviously, there was you know we had an episode last week that I did not get to be a part of, but you know your your top three takes on on the season. I mean, what what do you think? Yeah, no, I I mean I think I don't know I said it last week, but you had a, a historic season, right? Scott Dixon yep. passing Mario Andretti, Will Power passing Mario Andretti. Um, so you have two two of the all time greats in the sport doing things currently and are still going to be around. And those two guys, um, the young heads uh, that we've seen all year long um, with with Malukas, Ilot, Lundgaard, uh, you know, even Palo is still young. Colton Hurd is still so young, right? Um, so I think that's fantastic. I mean, even, you know, Connor, you, you're, you're, you, look, you look at these guys with, you, I mean, you look at, you know, Dixon and power and those guys, I mean, you know, you could race for however a little, much longer. Um, and then three, just the competitive competitiveness, like you said, I mean, when you have down the last two or three races, at least seven guys that are, could be in the fight, right. That are in the fight. Yes. That have a mathematically, uh, you know, a chance to, to stay alive and to win the thing. I thought it was fantastic. And, and I thought it was all momentum building uh, really throughout the whole entire year to go into 2023. And we're continuing to see, you know, uh, up and coming stars like Scotty Mack that we've talked about, who is a great personality, who's engaging with the fans, who uh, is fun to follow. Right. And is a guy that's fun to watch drive, uh, which, which I think is fantastic too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just, just, again, we're, 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 we're super excited about 2022, but, but bummed that we have this long wait into the off season. Do we have any update on the 2023 schedule? I know it's gotta be, we're recording on Tuesday. I know it's gotta be any time yes. now, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to have maybe the full drop. What have, have you heard anything? Do we know? Well, as we check the Twitter sphere, we do not see anything yet, but there is, there was one interesting note, um, yesterday that I saw via the interwebs. Um, and it was that, you know, we occasionally we have had like a preseason, um, little preseason, uh, warm up test, little two days of testing, yes. um, which has obviously been very welcomed for us as it, uh, we call it, you know, a little, little preseason action. Uh, and 
it looks like there's there's maybe some talk about the preseason test being held at uh, the Thermal Club in in Palm Springs, California. Now, a lot yeah. of like actual race fans m- will not know what that is because there is no professional racing events that are held there. So it's not you haven't seen it on anyone's schedule. It's not on Formula One schedule. It's not on the NASCAR schedule. It's not on our schedule. However. It is a very, very, very high class facility, like very, very impressive facility. I I did a race there in 2000, like end of 2014, because I know several of the people um, who who basically were a part of it starting. Uh, And it's basically like a very high end club track. So all the Lamborghini, McLaren, uh, Ferrari dealerships like in Southern California all do driving events there like. My friends who worked who work at uh, the O'Gara Coach Company, the uh, Lamborghini, McLaren, Bugatti dealers in Southern California, like that's where Kendall Jenner goes to drive her car. You know what I mean? Like that's where that's where these super celebrities go to try to learn how to drive cars more competitively or or more efficiently. You know what I mean? And and more recently, they've been trying to obviously have more of a professional, uh, I would say, a professional look at at the racing track because. It's a very nice track and they have lots of different configurations um, and the lodging around the track. There's incredible like houses, there, garages, incredible stuff. Um, so again, looking at it reasonably, it's like, well, why would we test there? Because we're not racing there. That, that is my first question um, because that doesn't really give us much yeah, relevant data. Provide. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't really do much for us, I guess, other than just driving. Um, but also it is a very exciting area for, uh, sponsors, rich people, uh, and it's just nice. So I, you know, it's, it's an interest. I would love to know all the reasoning behind it. Maybe thermal is like paying us an absurd amount of money to go there. I don't know. It's a, a big networking event with you guys as the theater. Exactly. Like it could be one of those things where, big networking event like this is where we want the track to go in the future we want to have professional events here stuff like that um so again interesting business move i love it because again i'm spending a lot more time in southern california now and i like southern california and palm springs it's quite nice and i and i i actually enjoy uh the track so interesting development other than that on the schedule we're not sure yet but uh, i'm sure that we will see that i would say quite soon I have seen, I think from Nathan Brown, um, you know, a few of the guys who are, who are, you know, really, really on the beat for, for IndyCar uh, mention that beginning season, the beginning stretch of the season and how, because Texas is coming back. um, Obviously St. Pete, everything. There's still going to be that, that bit of a break, that awkward timing to where you have a race two or three weeks off, have a race uh, two weeks off. Is, can, can we ever combat that? How do you combat that? I, you know, what, what, what do we got to do to make it to where it's not such a weird choppy beginning of the year? Yeah, I hate it. Um, and I, and I, and I don't, I don't know all of the reasoning behind it. It's actually, it, it is actually a question that I, I would like to ask, you know, in December we have, you know, series meetings um, yeah, at, at the speedway, all the drivers, you know, come together for our physicals early December. And, and we have kind of a sit down with Jay Fry and all the, all the folks at IndyCar and it is, you know, Mark miles as well. And like, it, it's something that I would like to ask because, you know, it, it, there, it's probably things that we can't control. Like it's like a TV window thing. And I mean, maybe yep. we just can't find any tracks to host races, host us at racetracks. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I we always talk about trying to get to 20 races with the schedule. Well, I see, I see a bunch of weeks there at the beginning where you could fit at least one or two of those races in, you know what I mean? And if you still don't want to compete against football, well, you're not, you're, you go, we're racing in, let's put another race in March, put another race in April, put another race, uh, you know, end of April, whatever it is, you know, you don't, don't, don't put all three there. You don't have to like really go crazy with it because May is obviously super busy, Uh but at least just add one. Uh, and make it not as, you know, one, then a month, and then another, then a month, and then another. It's just, it is a tough, it becomes a tough series to follow because, again, we already don't have the, the, the money or the power to force market our way into, like, 
remember us. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's tough to, it's tough to do that. So I don't know what the answer is, but I, I you know, it's a question I would like to ask. Um, I, I will, I don't think it'll be fixed for this year, but you know what, maybe for the future, uh, when we get a television show, man, maybe that'll help. <laughs> yeah. Ask that and then report back. And we're going to, we're going to come back yeah. to it in December when we're recording, um, real quick before we get to AJ, uh, it was a fantastic interview. Really, really enjoyed it. I've never talked to him before, um, and and I thought he was great. Um, so you're gonna love it as well. But of course, we got to follow up on the Colton Herta F1 <laughs> saga. Okay, and over the last week, yourself, Alex Rossi, Graham Rahal. I mean, pretty much everyone and anyone in IndyCar really went to bat for not only Colton, but also really was kind of putting their foot down on F1. I mean, Graham Rahal really came out and said, they don't want us. They've never wanted us. It's an elitist sport. I mean, drew a retweet from me even like what, what's, what's kind of the inner chatter. <laughs> if you can, you know, uh, divulge any of it for, from, from the drivers in IndyCar. I mean, you guys are talking about it. Like this is wild, man. I mean, I mean we're seeing a real strong stance collectively, from the IndyCar series against Formula One because of what they're doing with Colton. Yeah, and and I think it, we don't want to seem you know too aggressive towards Formula One as like a hatred, right? Because like we all, in the end, we all watch Formula One in the mornings. Like all the IndyCar drivers, like we all we all watch it. Like we are, like we do at least tune in for a little bit of it. And I think, like, I actually had someone who was a listener of the podcast come up to me at Laguna Seca and be like, hey, like, try not to hate on Formula One too much. And I was like, well, we're not necessarily hating on it. But what, what's tough for us, right, when you have to think about it like this, let's say, let's say someone who worked in a similar field to you comes to, comes to your job and, like, you kind of do the same thing. Like, let's say, uh, you know, you're a welder. And he's a welder, but like you work at some other place and he works at another place. So you guys are doing similar work. You know, maybe one, one welder is a little, you know, there, maybe they work in a, maybe a nicer neighborhood. I don't know. But he comes over to you and immediately says, you guys suck at everything and you could never be at our place. And it's like, well, we do the same thing. Like, you know, we, you live in a different district. <laughs> like I, I can't work there. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's a very simple, like we are all racing drivers. You know what I mean? It's like, F1 is a world championship. Obviously, that is a higher level. No one's trying to say that IndyCar is the same level of Formula One. Like, we all get that it's a, a world championship. It is the biggest racing series in the world, potentially the biggest sport actually in the world other than soccer. Um, but when we hear so many things about how awful like American drivers are, or how awful our like how our series doesn't rank you know, on a point system, it's just it, it, like, that's, that's coming to attack what we do for a living and like what we love. And so like, that's, that's why we like, that's why we respond so aggressively. Cause it's like, it's like if someone attacked your brother, like your family, like you're going to defend your, your family. And like, even right now, I, I like the unity that, that we have as IndyCar supporting Colton, like obviously IndyCar and racing in general, very selfish sport. Like every man for himself, you know, you got to fight for your ride, but like we all pretty much like are unified in saying, yeah, Colton's pretty good. You know what I mean? And, and it doesn't matter where he finished in the championship. It doesn't matter all that stuff. Like the raw speed, the raw, you know, driving talent is, is there. And so, you know, that, th that, that is why so many drivers have become, you know, have voiced their opinion about it because we all talk about it. We, every, every driver intros, anytime all the drivers get together, it's like, man, I, it's certain, well, the American drivers, I would say, Let, let's say like me, Alex, you know, we talk with, about it with Colton, you know, Kyle Kirkwood, any, any, any of the American drivers, like it's because we, we, we don't, it's just, it's just not a, it's not a justifiable criticism to just, just because we're American, you know what I mean? And, and that, that is what I, I find really upsetting. Um, and I will, I mean, I will go to bat for, for, for Colton or any American driver, you know, to, to, to be, you know, to be in formula one to, to get there because I, I you know, I, I was, I was working on the challenge myself. So it's a very interesting system. Obviously it looks like, you know, that's not happening for Colton next year. 
Um, but, uh, you know, but I do hope it, it, it does in the future. I do hope in 2024, we're having these, you know, conversations about, Hey, you know what? Colton's in formula one. He's our guy now, but, uh, sometimes, you know, those chances, they don't, they don't come that often. So I'm really hoping that, you know, realistically we didn't miss the boat. You know what I mean? We, we didn't, we didn't miss that chance at, at having Colton in formula one. So we will obviously see what happens. Um, but it is a very interesting debate and I hate, I hate the anger that it stirs between people. But again, if you criticize one group of people and one, and like, literally they say it like, yeah, American drivers, like, no, it's, 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 I mean, I've seen it for years. Like Alex and I saw it in person over there. Like we're just not as regarded and, 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 and I'm sorry, but that is, the way it is. And like, I'm going to try to go to Coda for the U S Grand Prix. Right. And like, I have a lot of friends in the F1 paddock, but like, I'm curious to see if people are like still kind of the same way. Like you're like, Oh, well, you know, American guys, whatever. You know what I mean? I, I just, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out over the next, really over the next 18 months. Yeah. Two, I mean, two things before we get to AJ on it is for me is one, you know, F1 being people for to say to us, don't hate too much on F1. Or that's all that F1 does to, like you just mentioned, IndyCar and American drivers. I mean, you're going to take a stance, right? So, you know, stick that with a stun don't shine. Like, we're going to take a stance on it. We're not just going to sit here and let them go run amok. And then uh, every time that we clap back, then it's all of a sudden like, well, you're, what are you hating on it so much? It's like, no, shut up. And then two, <laughs> when they're trying to expand into America so much, Miami, Coda, Las Vegas coming in next year, you know, they, like Graham said, like you all said, You want the American dollars. You want the American viewers. You want the American cities. You don't want the American drivers. That's a problem. Doesn't sit well for me. Doesn't sit well for me. Doesn't sit well for anybody. I don't think so. Those are my two things. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely true. And, and, you know, we, it's something we could talk about for hours. Like, I mean, it's something that it's a conversation that we have. Like I I love, you know, Graham, Graham is very passionate about being honest on the internet. I love what Alex said too. It's, it's, you know, certainly Alex and I in particular are guys who, you know, in, in the last, decade last two decades you know we've we've been over there we've experienced it and alex was the last american formula one driver so you know there's 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 he's got a lot to bring to the table when it comes to that debate so um it is an interesting situation but uh you know we'll, we got to get to our guests now we got to get to our friend aj Almendinger. I that's right we, interview. yeah we got to get to aj fantastic conversation before we get to that just a reminder uh to follow us at speed street pod on instagram and twitter be sure to like follow it's follow now not subscribe to the show uh, wherever you get your podcasts and then we have speed street shirts available now that you can buy speed street from dirty mo media they got our logo on it we got a white one we got a black one they look fantastic uh they're very soft they're very comfortable ben can you tell folks where they can find those Go to dirtymomedia.com or you can, if you are in person here in North Carolina, you can go to the Junior Motorsports shop. We have them available on sale there as well. Yep, they're up in our link in our bio on Instagram right now too. So go get yourself one of those. I would love to see them come 2023 uh, when we are back out in uh, the paddock and the garages and everything like that. All right, let's get to them. AJ Almendinger. All right, we're very, very excited to uh, have an extremely talented racing driver, a multifaceted racing driver, uh, a man who was a rookie at the Indy 500 with myself, a man who has many trophies in his life, uh, a man who is an elite athlete. Uh, AJ Almeninger, how are you doing today? Pretty hungover, man. So <laughs> I'm just joking. I love um, NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I'm just trying to catch up to your lifestyle there. Connor, that's all. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to live my best life just to get anywhere near the aura of Connor Daly. Well, that is an admirable thing that you could do. Um, But I I'm very, very honestly, I want to get right into it because I'm very excited for you, AJ. I think your story of being a very successful open wheel driver and then the transition to NASCAR with like a let's say probably not the best team at times, not the best equipment. And you're out there grinding it out, grinding it out. And then you're like, you know what? I'm tired of this uh, baloney. And then you go away and then you come back and you're like, all right, well, this is good equipment now. Maybe I'll just win everything. And that's what you've done. So like, I, I, I love that because you got tired of all the uh, you know, all the crap, like, cause racing is hard and it's at times it's annoying 
Um, but when you got the right stuff, the colleague team giving you all the goods, I mean, regular season champion, look, no big deal. That's that just happened. Uh, but you've won so many things. Um, I, I love that. And I think our podcast is very IndyCar related, right? So like, what was, what was your initial thought going from like open wheel cars to the cup cars? Because I think a lot of people haven't really heard that in a long time, I would say. And I actually want to hear that as well. Yeah, honestly, man, it was uh, in a way like trying to learn how to walk again. Like it, I got in the car and I was like, what is this thing? Like it, <laughs> it moves around. I mean, and, you know, and, and the worst part of it for me was the fact that I basically went straight to cup, not by ch choice, but that was what Red Bull wanted to do. And I didn't think that was a fantastic idea, but you're not going to turn it down. So it was a, a, a serious challenge, especially at Red Bull, because it was a brand new team. Toyota was the first year manufacturer. There was like 58, 60 cars every weekend trying to qualify for the race. And I mean, I just felt like every time I was in the car, I was just trying to do something to have them believe in me. Like I was like, I didn't care if it was one lap in practice or if I just made the race or whatever it was. I felt like I was always like hanging on to the side of the cliff sliding down and just trying to climb back up just to kind of stay in the sport. And then right as I felt like I started to figure out at Red Bull, uh, that's when our boy Scott Speed got put in the car. And, and then from there, the next couple of years, it was just grinding away to try to stay in the sport. So it, it, it you know, looking back at it, I, and I did some trucks and a few Xfinity races at that time, but not, not what I was told by Red Bull that I was going to do. And it was tough. And there was many of dark days of just trying to, to stay in the sport and you know connor like we live this thing right like it, it's a racing cars for a living is special but it's it's still a job and it's still it, it's your passion so when it doesn't go well you feel like it's the end of the world is it the worst thing in the world probably not but <laughs> we feel like it right so it i mean it was it was tough and yeah you get to a certain point where you're finally like man, I'm just, I'm worn out, especially, you know, with IndyCar, there's, you get weekend breaks and obviously you get a, a longer off season, which is good and bad in my opinion, but it's NASCAR going well. It's tough racing every weekend and, and not letting it bury you, let alone when you're struggling. So yeah, you finally, uh, mentally, you just reach a point where you're like, man, I'm just tired and maybe a break is what I need. And, and I, was fortunate enough that that break was with NBC and to do TV stuff. So I got to see that side of it. <laughs> AJ, AJ, Joey Molinero. Um, good to meet <laughs> you, man. Thanks. Thanks for being on here. Um, well, I think we all want to know when, when are you going to run the 8,500 again? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the hard hitting question. Um, probably, probably not. Probably never. Ah, uh. A hundred percent. Like you, you don't really have interest. You, you just don't think it'll uh, come to materialize with a team, no, a sponsor. I, or? I think if I, uh, I think if I called Mike Shank right now, I could, I could get in a race car and go run the Indy 500. Um, I, I love that race. The memory I have with Roger Penske is something that will never leave my memory bank. It's one of the most special couple of weeks of my life to walk down gasoline alley before the race side by side with Roger Penske, knowing he's going to call your race, leading laps there, everything about it. It was everything that I had dreamed of. Uh, the ending, maybe not, you know, when you're leading your seatbelts come undone, that, that is, uh, but I was told by my engineer at that point that that was, it's a good story of life, right? Like you get to tell that story that you're leading and your seatbelts come undone. So, um, but to be a hundred percent brutally honest and Connor knows this, right? You have to have zero fear going into that race. Absolutely zero fear. If, if you have 1% of man, if this happens, then you can't be out there. And I think I'm probably at a point in my life where I probably would have 1%. I'd still have 99% of, of all go, but I think there's probably that 1% of man, if this happens and I don't, so I, 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 I just know better and <laughs> I, I know where I'm at. Totally I fair. Actually, I have 99% fear when I ride in a two seater. So I'm not even driving. You know? I, I, I totally get it. Yeah. I would have one, probably 1% 1 fear, but that's enough. <laughs> at the 500. And that's, 
I, I know people would love for me to do it. I, it's just, I'm happy with what I'm doing and I love watching my friends race that race. I love it. And it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm okay with that. Whether that's the right answer or not, I'm okay with it. No, I, I think it's fine. I mean, I, I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about the Indy 500 as well, because we were obviously rookies together. Our names will be on that little board in the, uh, in the museum at the Amplisoner Speedway forever. No big deal. I, th- I felt very special about that. Uh, th- I mean, that weekend, that whole month, I remember it obviously very well because it was my first one uh, also. And like, I-, I talked to you, I feel like so much that month because like we were both learning very different situations, Foyt car, <laughs> Penske car, wildly different <laughs> situations. But like you legitimately in your rookie year at the Indy 500, I mean, a lot of people would say you were going to win the race. Like you you were in a position to win the, you know, the biggest race in the world. Um, And I I, I think it's a very, it's, it's tough to look back on, but also you have to be really proud of it. Cause like, as again, now someone who has led the race and got hit by tires or random stuff like that, I, I get it. Like it's, it's really hard to be, to be that close. Um, But it, it, it's it's also I think really cool. To, did that give you a feeling of like you've been an open wheel racer for so long? Like was that feeling just something like hey you know what this is pretty cool? Like we had a, we had a shot at doing this with the best team, the best situation, and you left it all out there. Yeah, I it, it the and it, in a way I think it's probably I would be a little nervous to go back and I don't want to say mess up those memories because th- they're always going to be there, but but just everything that I remember about it, like have something change that or, or have something like, okay, well, that's my lasting memory now of, of the 500, everything about it. I just remember, you know, that I had such a good time being teamed up with, with Will and Elio. I'd known Will from racing champ car with him a bit. So we had uh, already had some sort of relationship. Elio, I, I didn't know any, I really had never <laughs> even met. And I used to think on TV, I'm like, man, this guy, he's got to be fake, right? Like, <laughs> just bouncing around, like, this is an act. Like, we see it. Like, there's no way that this guy is really like this. He's putting this on for TV, and he probably leaves the TV screen and is complete a-hole, and, and that's how he is. <laughs> but it's not. Like, literally, that's how he is 24-7. And I had so much fun being teamed up with Elio uh, and still have a great relationship with him. So, and then I remember <laughs> – one at one point just debriefing with Rick Mears and I started tuning him out because I was like, Oh my God, I'm talking to Rick Mears at Indy. <laughs> like, and like, I went on this five minute, like just of my own thoughts of like, Oh my God, it's Rick Mears. Like how this, and then all of a sudden I was like, Oh crap. He's been telling me a lot of info. I probably should have been listening to, but <laughs> very I, important. I forgot, yeah. <laughs> but I forgot because I'm just staring at Rick Mears like this. How cool is this? And, and like I said, the whole thing with Roger leading the race, I remember the first time I took the lead uh, down the front straightaway and, and I went down the back straightaway and like, I started shaking in the car because <laughs> it was like, I'm leading the Indy 500. And for about a lap, I, I couldn't stop shaking. I had to realize like, Hey, AJ, you're, there's still like 140 to go or whatever it was like, like so many it, laps. Yeah. yeah. Like let's get it back together. But just everything about it, it, it is, it's the coolest race in the world. And those memories, I just, I, I cherish them. And, and like I said, I mean, right or wrong, it's like, I'm okay with those being my memories and having a real shot to go win it. And also it was a very special weekend as well, because I believe that is when you first started hanging out with your lady, which that is, is, is very exciting. You now, when you when you throw out the professioning bowling line, you know, professional bowler, professional you, bowler, AJ. Yeah, by the her. way, guys, anybody that's going to watch this, if you meet a girl from Nebraska, you tell her you're a professional bowler. Bang, right there. Like locked that, her right in. You that's know, what's it. hilarious is, is as well this year, a very, you know, many years later. I also started dating my lady after the Indy 500 weekend. So like, here we go. A lot of career similarities minus me doing anything successful. So uh, you know, that's just, that's pretty much how it works. <laughs> now, AJ, I'm glad you said that about the Indy 500 coolest race in the world, because there's kind of a popular like trend going on on Twitter. A few people around the world in a different motor series that we don't need to talk about. They kind of make fun of it. They're like, Oh, it's an oval big whoop, you know? 
what do you say to people who have that opinion, that mindset when they look at the Indy 500 and, well, you're just going around in a circle, right? What do you have to say to them? Are those Europeans that, yep. that are saying that? <laughs> yeah. It could be, could be movie stars, could be late night <laughs> talk show hosts, you know, it could be people who just started watching Netflix, all the above. <laughs> well, you know, in any, any, you know, movie star or anybody that, that wants to question that, they just got to get in the two seater and get the, the, you know, living daylight stared out of them. Um, you know, I, I get, I, I guess, you know, on, on the European side or, or people that if it's formula one people or, or, you know, even drivers, cause you know, you see people like Lewis come out and be like, well, Fernando about won it. Like, you know, yeah. that that's, I understand them saying that because that's just their opinion of, of never have doing it before. I can tell you, running 240 mile per hour around Indy is the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Like it, um, Connor, what'd you hit 250 this year? 244. 244. Okay. <laughs> Let's call it 250 because it's Let's close call it 250. <laughs> I like, like that you know, a lot better. You know what I mean? Like yeah. 244 down into the corner. I mean, it's insane. It, it, I remember qualifying and I think we probably all do this. You know, you do four laps of qualifying I remember coming off a of turn four for the white in the fast nine and I had to, you know, my hands got a little, it got a little free and I went, <laughs> Oh my God. And I was tapped out on all the adjustments. So all I did was take my left foot and I set it on my right foot and just push <laughs> both pedals, you know, both feet down as hard as I could for one lap. Like it's scary. So the butt cheeks tighten up a little bit, just a oh, little bit. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, at the end of the day, I think, and we, especially now in, in this day and age we live in, Every's, but everybody's got an opinion, whether they've done it before, never have done it, whether they want to knock it down and make themselves feel better about what they do or whatever it is, they have their opinions, but until you go to do it, I mean, it's, it's craziness. So I get, I get what they're going to say about it, but I'll, you know, people that have experienced it, they know a, it's such a, a badass race to be a part of and B to like strap yourself down in there and know that you have to hold on for, basically four hours at, at that speed. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not physically over physically demanding as, you know, racing a street course, but mentally you are whooped. It's the most, it's one of the most mentally whooped races I've ever had in my life. Well, trust me, the cars are 10 times harder to drive now than 2013. So it's, it's yeah. even, it's even worse yeah. now, but I, I want to get before I get I have very important questions about the NASCAR Cup Series and the Xfinity Series, which you're, you know, very, very successful in. But when when you look at motorsports as a whole right now, like obviously we've seen the success of how Formula One has, you know, done whatever it's done in the States because of a Netflix television show. And we see obviously, you know. IndyCar has had a successful year when it comes to ratings. And I think we see the series grow. We've got Jimmy Grosje, all these guys, big names, you know, all this stuff. And NASCAR, I think is as well, you know, everything is, everything is going up. You see the, you know, there, there are how many, 17 different winners, 18, a ton of different winners in the cup series. Now you see a, like an incredibly competitive truck field, Xfinity field. Do you see the whole mode, like all tides racing all the ships or whatever that, that phrase is like, do you see motorsport really, taking a, 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 a better hold in, in, in North America right now? Oh, I mean, I hope so. I, I think <laughs> the biggest thing, biggest thing that, you know, and, and that the industry in North America, and I, I don't, cause formula one is, is obviously over the world is, is probably the big, the, for sure the biggest motorsports and one of just the biggest sport when it comes to, worldwide yet you know i know they don't want an american driver in formula one Obviously. so you know <laughs> let's let's it's 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 big in america unless you want the american driver in it then they don't want that but other <laughs> other than that um i think the the biggest thing that we're starting to do over the last couple of years and we need to continually do is work together in motorsports because i always felt like when i was an open wheel and then even when i got to nascar it was well, you're you know, either an open wheel person or you're a NASCAR person. You can't yeah. be fans of both. You pick one or the other. That's not going to work because it, let's be honest, in North America, motorsports is still a small niche of what the sporting industry is in North America compared to the NFL, college football, NBA. 
So we have to work together. And I think, you know, when it comes to doing those, the races in Indy together, uh, we probably need to do more of those trying to w- collaborate, whether it's with the TV networks, you know, with for NBC, sure. you know, and USA and stuff for, for the NASCAR side of it and IndyCar side of it and sports car side of it, but even Fox and, and all that, we just got to co-promote to make it as big as possible because as we've seen now, because I always felt like too, it's like you, you had target when it came to chip Ganassi, but it's like sponsors were like, okay, you got to pick one or the other as well. No, you don't. Yeah. You can yeah. be a part of both. You can get great things out of, out of IndyCar, out of NASCAR, IMSA, all of it. So I think it's growing, but I think as an industry, we got to keep that, that kind of that same attitude, like, Hey, it's not one versus the other. It's all of us together just trying to make motorsports bigger. Do you think there is a NASCAR team that could want to venture over to IndyCar? And if so, who do you think that would be? Uh, Justin Marks right away. Yep. I mean, track house, uh, what Justin Marks is doing uh, it, it just as a whole. And it, it's the same thing with, with our team owner, Matt colleague, you know, I think, um, you know, Matt, the, the difference between Justin and, and Matt, right? Like they're, they're both business guys, but Matt wasn't a motorsports guy until he started becoming a part of NASCAR. That, that wasn't a passion he had. This passion has grown now for him massively. That's why we have three Xfinity cars and two cup cars and, and, you know, continually trying to grow. But if you look at Justin Marks, I mean, his, yeah, his dad has, has had a huge business adventure Justin's whole life, but Justin has raced a lot of different types of cars and he's had that motorsports passion since he was younger. So I really believe, you know, if I had to pick one, one team owner right now to be the next one to go over there, it's, it's track house and Justin Marks right away. You know, I, I, agree. Think, I think Matt, our team owner, Matt Collig, you know, has interest. He's always kind of looking outside of like, okay, but we have so much work to do in NASCAR right now. Like that's our full focus, but I could always see Matt, you know, possibly sponsoring a car at the Indy 500 or something like that down the line. Um, but for a, a full team right away, it, it could easily be track house and, and Justin Marks. Yeah. He's I, I've talked to Justin a lot. I really respect what he's done for sure in the sport. Um, and, and so getting now heavily into, uh, you know, the championship that you're pursuing here, um, what's, what's it going to take? There's, a, there's been a lot of interesting Xfinity racing, I would say lately, very, a lot of contact to win races, a lot of, uh, interesting races. Um, but like, I, I honestly think it's, there's been some great racing too. There's been some, there's been some good racing. There's been some moments where I think, um, you would look at it because I know how you look at things and you're like, well, that was dumb. You know what I mean? And I, I love that. Um, but what's, what's it going to take to, because the playoff system is, is still a wild thing for me. It's very interesting to, to, to work through, but what's it going to take to, uh, you know, to be the champion this year? What, what do you, what do you think yeah. you guys have to do most? So the way our playoffs work, you know, you, you got to kind of break it down in, into, uh, you know, the round of 12, when it, when it comes to specifically for Xfinity, the round of 12, all you got to do is really be consistent. You know, yeah. I mean, if we can just keep doing uh, literally what we're doing every weekend of, of maximizing each race, we'll get to the next round, no problem. You know, the Roval's in that round. So obviously we're going to be really strong there. Talladega, anything can happen. So it's, you know, last year we got crashed right away in that race. So it put a little pressure on us at the Roval. Uh, but if we can just be consistent, we make it through the, the first round, I think, really without a, a ton of worry. Now, the second round, when there's eight of us, we, we, we have to step our game up because just running edge of the top five, top tens aren't going to get it to the to the final four. It really, I don't believe, not this year. There's too many strong cars. There's too many, you know, you look at Noah and you look at Ty and you even look at, at Justin Algar, you know, they got a lot of bonus points. I'm fourth in line in bonus points. I think I'm one point behind Justin, so we're fairly close. Uh, but if you look at Noah and Ty, like, like they can almost have a, a throwaway race and still probably make it without even winning. So you can almost, in a way, not that, you know, anything can happen, but you, you can look at those two cars and say they're probably going to be in Phoenix unless something just completely derails in, in, those, in those three races. Um, so you almost kind of look at, okay, now you're racing. There's six cars for two spots 
and we got to run inside the top five of these races. Um, I don't think necessarily you have to win to get in, but you get definitely have to run inside the top five. So we have to, to be a little bit better. We haven't had the outright speed this year. We're working hard um, to, to find that. I felt like Bristol, at least we made some small gains, kind of went back to some stuff that we've done in the past. And then once you get to Phoenix, I mean, you just, you, you, you have to be the best of those four cars. Anything can happen in that championship race, but usually it's, it's the best car wins that race. You don't, as crazy as it can get for the championship. And we saw Daniel and, and, and Austin at the end of the race last year, everybody's still pretty respectful because I, I, everybody says, man, I'll do whatever it takes to win, win the championship. And, you know, outright you will on the line, but I think the four drivers that make it in, in all three series, you don't want to be the guy that's like, yeah, I dumped the guy with 10 to go and just wrecked him. And I won the champion. Like you, you don't, you can go out there and say, yeah, I'll do what it takes. You don't want to be that guy though. So everybody yeah. generally rakes with some respect until, you know, five to go or, or late race restart. So you usually have to be the best of those four cars and that's where we have to be better. And so obviously you're, you know, road course ace guy, but I would say now, obviously you have really diversified your skill set. You, you're a guy that's been competitive at every type of track. I would say talking about the Roval in, in particular, I think that's an interesting track that NASCAR has brought into the schedule. Do you think like, do you like that track? First of all, like as a road course guy, like it, do, do you think it, it, it is a, a proper road course. It, it puts on a good show. Like, what do you think of that, that track in general? I actually have really enjoyed it. I, I, when they first, when they first did it, I, I wasn't going to turn it down. Right. Like I didn't, especially with the all-star race at Charlotte, I was like, we don't need another 500 miles at Charlotte. Like we do that. <laughs> there, nobody's really showing up at this point. Like, so when they start, went to the Roval, I was like, okay, that's cool. I was like, okay, maybe a little gimmicky. We'll see what it's like. I actually really like the racetrack because it gives you that street course feel inside the racetrack, inside the, the, the road course portion of it. A lot of elevation changes, easy to make a mistake and crash. Uh, and then you get on the oval and it's kind of crazy because you, you get on the oval and then you got a hard break zone down the back straightaway and then you ramp it back up and you carry actually a ton of speed through three and four and you're hard on the brakes again. So I do think it puts on great races uh, in, in both series. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's, you know, the way they set it up that it's at the end of the, uh, the second round is, is pretty, pretty cool. So I, I've enjoyed that racetrack. I don't think, you know, of course the first year was successful and they're like, Oh, we need to make more of these. I'm like, no, we don't need to make more rovals. Like we, we can, we like, we, we can have a good idea with one thing and not have to spread it out to multiple racetracks, but I, I really enjoy it. And uh, it's, it's fun and it's, it's a, a huge challenge. And I think in the new cup car, when we tested their lap times were like three seconds quicker, like you're hucking it through the infield. It, it was I remember running five laps and like getting out of the car. I was like, whew, I'm, I'm kind of out of breath because you're pretty tense inside the race car because you're really carrying a ton of speed through the infield. So I think it's going to put on really good races in, in both cars. We've seen it in the Xfinity race and the cup race. I think it's going to be really good. AJ, last one from me here. Um, when I think of race car driver names, I think of ones like yours. Where would you rank AJ Allmendinger as just a straight up, race car driver name i mean that's got to be up there man you can pat yourself on the back a little bit that that's up there what do you think aj on well, yourself what do you like uh, it's not it's not bad because i've had many people tell me like hey i'm not at you know i'm my wife or whatever she she doesn't really know anything about racing but she's a fan of you because your name sounds like a cookie or some <laughs> something right like everyone loves cookies and i'm like and i you know it's like i was like hey you know I, one of my one of my lines to my wife when i was trying to pick her up and indy when she i was like please remember me i was like i don't care what you call me as long as you call me <laughs> so you know as long as people remember my last name because it's weird and it's long and sounds like a cookie or other things it sounds like it's uh oh. it's, it's it's pretty stellar like it's it's a good name it sounds like a movie character. I mean, yeah. it really does. Now, racing name, I, I don't want to give him too much credit, but I mean, Scott Speed, like how, like, right? Right. Like, yeah. I had to grow up racing go karts with them. You know, we're, we're friends now. We were probably not friends back then at times. But I always <laughs> like, I was like, man, this is BS, Scott Speed. I'm like, this is a made up name. So, Tough environment. Yeah. yeah Tough environment. Like, that, that's AJ. Still, that's good. I, 
I, I appreciate you. I know you are on a very tight schedule because you're a very famous man and you have lots of things to do with your life. Uh, I'm very lucky that you return my text messages at times. I do have to call you this week about something very, very important. So just put that on your back burner. But thank you so much for, uh, for being with us on Speed Street. It's a very exciting podcast. If you ever want to listen to it, no big deal. It'll probably be entertaining for you. <laughs> well, hey, remember, it's not really my schedule. You, and you know this for a fact, Connor, that if, if I don't go, Carly screams at me. And God That's forbid, true. I really need that. Like, <laughs> you don't need that in your life. Not at all. Like, it's a train wreck when she's yelling at me. So I don't, I don't need that today. Very scary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. AJ. Thanks, guys. All right. That was an incredible conversation with AJ. Uh, I have a lot of respect for AJ. I've known him for a very long time. I've been a fan of AJ for a very long time. Like I, I was a fan of his in the champ car days. I remember meeting him when I was a youth, a young, a young lad trying to be a race car driver. And then I, I literally laughed when we were rookies together at the Indy 500. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is like AJ Allmendinger. Like it was, it was, you know, it was, it was incredible. So great to have him on. Uh, I could have talked to him for an hour, honestly, but uh, very famous and very busy. So um, you know, he's got an Xfinity championship to go try and win. Um, and we saw some very, very exciting NASCAR racing over the weekend. I'm very curious as to, you know, what everyone thinks about how, you know, obviously we saw Bristol dirt, which was very interesting as well. Um, but, uh, you know, Bristol, the, 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 the paved Bristol track is like, it is a really cool place and it does look fun to race on. Um, and the Xfinity race, obviously, you know, a, a, a wild one. Uh, Noah Gregson, friend of the show, uh, winner again. That guy is on a, a heater and yeah. just vomiting all along the way. Just absolutely, I mean, exploding out of his mouth uh, in the race car and doing donuts and winning and having Waffle House every night after he wins. I mean, it's a, it's a really um, – impressive effort by him and the junior motorsports team. Um, and then the cup race as well, Chris Busher getting the win. I mean, who could have predicted that? I, I, I wouldn't have, you know, it's a wild stat that like none of the playoff guys have won a race yet. I don't think in the, in the playoffs. So it's, it's, it's a wild, um, a wild scene in NASCAR right now, but I, but I love it. I think, I think that, that those types of surprises are, you know, what keep people keep, keep people locked in. Our boy Chase Briscoe moving on. Chase Briscoe moving on. Yes, sir. Great man. Was talking to him just this morning. Um, uh, it's it's great to see him having success. Uh, I, I, I'm just very curious to see how aggressive everyone gets as the playoff playoffs move on. Obviously, it's a uh, you know if if you win, you're in. Obviously, which is very important. But it seems like at some of these races, it is very much going to be a points battle. It's going to be a, a, who's going to just be the highest finishing person in that race, which is very very fascinating. I do have to um, give a quick shout out to a listener. Uh, I was down in Bloomington over the weekend. I got a chance to hop on Big Ten Network, which was very cool uh, before the IU football game. Um, so I was down there live from the stadium and uh, a fellow named Luke came up, uh, talked to me, introduced himself, said he's a fan of the show, said he listens every week, said that he really, really wants us to get Chase Briscoe on. And I was like, I hear you, brother. I know <laughs> we, me and Connor are both friends with them. We've been trying, um, but yeah, he's in the middle of a playoff battle right now, you know? So it's a little tough, a little tough to get him on, but I know that we will eventually have a conversation with Chase Briscoe, no doubt, but uh, just a quick shout out to Luke for coming and uh, saying, Hey, and uh, for being a fan of the show. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to work on Chase, right? Hopefully he keeps, keeps this thing rolling. And then uh, hell, maybe we can get a NASCAR champ on there. Yeah, I mean, obviously NASCAR's season is eighteen hundred years long, so it's it's um, it's a, it's a long run, and those guys are busy. Like it's they got a lot going on. So I, I think the off season will be a great time to uh, you know to start interviewing all of our friends uh, yes. and friends that have been you know friends that have been a little bit busy for us. So so we'll see what happens. Absolutely, yeah. All right. So IndyCar has wrapped up again. Will Power is your champ. NASCAR is heading to Texas this weekend. Correct? Yes, they are going to the Texas Motor Speedway. That's on Sunday again at three thirty um, USA. And again, I'm sure you'll pull over you know three million viewers somehow while everybody's watching <laughs> the NFL. Uh, that's just how it rolls. And we'll pull for old Chase Briscoe there, of course, per usual. Um, all right, Connor, you got anything else? Do you want to get to the Ricky Treadway random Indy Five Hundred driver? 
Yeah, I, I think honestly, just great to be back on the show. Um, it's it's going to be a really interesting next few weeks uh, all across the board. You know, for racing, uh, I've got some interesting things cooking. So stay tuned uh, to the podcast for all the you know inside inside newses. Yes. Um, but yes, we will uh, we will get into the random Indy 500 driver of the week. Hold uh, on, we actually, quick. Quick status update: your, your your Colts and your Bengals just absolutely oh my gosh. basement dwellers to start the season. How are we feeling? Well, the Bengals um, the Bengals owe me a written apology, a handwritten apology uh, for ruining two different uh, parlays uh, over the weekend, which uh, every other team I won on. Uh, you know, a nice little teaser, a nice little money line parlay. Um, the Bengals, I, I just say it's embarrassing. And, and it's it's sad because, like, again, I love sports. I love football. And 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 especially talking about the Colts, too. The Colts, I mean, some of those guys probably live not too far from me. And, and like, I, I don't want to, like, see them in the street. And, you know, they punch me in the face if they somehow listen to Speed Street me. But I, I will say it's hard. It's hard to watch right now. It's hard to support two teams that I love who have zero wins uh, right out the gate. Uh, people can still say it's early on, um, but Joe Burrow is getting attacked like he's uh, not an absolute criminal. Like the guy is, the guy is getting assaulted in the backfield. Uh, and the Colts, I mean, I don't even. I, I, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. I was gonna say, I don't really think you would have to worry about it, even if you saw him in the street, because they haven't been hitting much of anything. So you, 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 <laughs> oh, you'd, you'd be safe right now, I think. Uh, sorry, oh. I got one more thing before we get to the random Indy 500 driver. I think this just broke. I don't know if you saw. I don't know if this is something that was planned that was going to happen. But um, how do you pronounce Taylor Kyle? Yeah, Why, yeah. Uh, just announced that he's not going to be with Arrow McLaren. Interesting. Yeah, Taylor, obviously very, uh, very high up there at McLaren. He was, I mean, he was there when I was, I, I was, I drove for them in 2019. Uh, I've actually known Taylor for a long time. Very, very, uh, very, very good, a smart man. Uh, so yeah, interesting. But he is a dad now. So you know what? Maybe he's doing family stuff. Not sure. Maybe he's going to another race team. Maybe he's bringing he says, all of McLaren's information with him. <laughs> this is from his post. This I do see his... the tweet. <laughs> yeah. As I step away, I'm most proud that we've grown this team into an organization able to fight for championship and wins each week. I now look forward to spending time with my own growing family and an exciting new chapter ahead. So there you go. Maybe. Well, they've already got one baby. Maybe he's got another one in the in the brewery. So who knows? Yep, that'll happen. All right. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> let's give me the driver. Let's do the let's do it. All right, we're going straight to the uh, 1954 Indy 500. We have done a very similar year before. I believe we did 1955. Um, but we are going to go uh, with the uh, the man who has who finished 23rd in the race. Uh, looks like he had a clutch failure, clutch issue. Uh, Gene Hartley. Gene Hartley. Uh, Leslie Eugene Gene Hartley uh, was an American race car driver, born and died in Roanoke, Indiana. So Indiana guy, um, and yeah, we uh, that he apparently did lots of Indy 500s, uh, but or tried to do lots of Indy 500s, um, but not a lot of not a lot of success for the poor fella. So uh, you know what? But we respect everyone who tries to do the Indy 500 because it's a very difficult race to uh, to do. Yep, just like you heard from AJ Almendinger, coolest race in the world. How about this quote from Leslie Eugene Jean? Quote, auto racing is all I've ever known, he said at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So he was uh, part of a racing family. His dad, uh, Ted Hartley, was a midget car driver. Uh, so there you go. There you go. That's our random Indy 500 driver of the week. It's great to be back in random Indy 500 land. Yes, sir. Connor, great to have you back, my man. Glad that you are uh, made it back alive from the city that never sleeps, the Sin City. <laughs> uh, appreciate you very much. Um, yeah, so this weekend, NASCAR, again, we'll be keeping you posted on all the silly season updates, rumors. It's the off season, and we're going to be able to have some fun. So be sure to follow at Speed Street Pod. Send us some suggestions. Send us some things you want us to talk about, both on Instagram and Twitter. Love seeing those. Leave us a rating and review so we can keep bumping this up, growing the neighborhood. And while we're doing that, get yourself a Speed Street shirt. They're comfy. They're cool. And uh, we just want you to be a part of the family, man. So do that. And we will talk to you again next week on Speed Street.